This week on RSBNB Update, it's Yak Track Week, and this one includes a pretty hefty XP boost. We ask, what are the problems with this, and what does it mean for future Yak Tracks? Also, we got our first look at the Glacier Front with its new scalable boss for teaching PVM. This is RSBNB Update, episode 844, recorded Thursday, August 26th, 2021. Two steps forward, one step yeah. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of RSBNB Update. This week, we are back. We have another Yak Track. These are some of my favorite RuneScape updates. Tannis, you're here as you are each and every week. Welcome back. Thank you, Shane. You enjoying it so far? Uh, yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. Let's let's just say, right. though, I am not afraid to use a skip token a this time A little skip around. here and there. <laughs> Little um, skip. Yeah. Also joining us is the RR man, a uh, longtime fixture of RSBNB update. I think even going back before, back before 2013, you and your friend Sorensen57 used to do an acapella version of our uh, um, theme song. Yeah, we've got to bring that back one day. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear what you guys <laughs> do with the updated uh, with the updated backing track because you guys uh, use the old version, but since then we do have a new one. That'd be interesting to get. Yeah, get it doesn't doesn't it? You know, together, I actually, so to speak. He, yeah, actually, he just came back this week, started playing. He hasn't played for about a year, so hey, it could, could be on the table. <laughs> it's always fun to see people come back to game, and um, one of the things I uh, I always tell people to check out when they come back is the Yak Tracks, because he, this is a piece of content that I use to guide my play style, and I, I feel like without Yak Tracks, my endeavors of what to do in game are somewhat lost, and... Uh, because I don't want to exactly push skills that don't have true 120s, because I want to save that for if and when they ever arrive. But Yak Tracks aren't um, aren't static. They change. And this one changed, too. Lots of people have been raising questions about this, uh, all in, within the RuneScape community and with, within our community as well. And I, I think I just want to open it up by saying that uh, Amazon Prime this month uh, if you have Prime Gaming, you get, I think it's uh, five additional skip tokens. I'm not sure if you guys were aware of that. Where, where do I get that? Uh, it's in your <laughs> monthly Amazon Prime bundle. Prime Gaming bundle. On RS. Twitch? Or Twitch Prime, sorry. Twitch Prime, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, Twitch I haven't Prime. claimed any of that stuff for a long time. Yeah, like, well, you should fun. this month. You get an extra five Yak Track skips. <laughs> He's and, doing it now. And this uh-huh. one runs until October 3rd, and they're calling it uh, Yak Track Path of the Creators. They're focusing in with this one specifically around Jazz and Wen. Uh, nothing in terms of full or Bic, which is interesting, but I guess they wanted to focus it around the first two fronts with this one. And we're, we are, we are going to talk about um, the way the tasks have changed, but we're also going to talk about the rewards, including that xp buff but before we dive too much into how the xp is being uh given out on this yak track some of the rewards that you can get are jazz's neophyte uh cosmetic outfit and uh the win cosmetic neophyte outfit these are two um very metallic using uh new uh materials in game uh gold for uh jazz and bluish for when you know these things look wonderful as they always do in yak track and i think i feel that there's less in terms of cosmetics this time does is that sense you guys got as well less in terms of cosmetics if you look at uh what's cool. on display because it's it's basically the when neophyte set a pet a title um and when and uh jazz armor or weapon overrides rather yeah, I, I was less awed by the cosmetics this time around um, until I heard the word Drake, and then that caught my attention. <laughs> and uh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, there are there are new. Oh, new the Drake Drakes. of when? Oh, mm-hmm. God. <laughs> <laughs> so, being the dragon lover that I am, I I am now stuck in a uh, yak track that I'm. Something 
feels like it's missing. Um, and what would that be? You know, I, I, I'm not sure. Are you going to put your I finger think, on it at all? No, because, I mean, honestly, the fixes that we're going to talk about, I think, are spot on. I think they're really good. Um, I'm actually in favor, especially, of being able to do your own thing and the increased skill and kills. Yeah. I think it's yeah. wonderful. Um, um, but the re- I don't know, something... Maybe it's in the cosmetics. Um, it just feels it, like... Because effectively yeah. what we have is we just have the um, Jazz and Wen Neophyte armor, male and female variants, and the weapon overrides. That's all we have for cosmetics this time around. We have a couple of titles and the pets. And I think that's perhaps what's feeling off. And I just want to say for anybody out there who's concerned, you mentioned the word Drake that these drakes are not big and flappy like the shadow drake that everybody loves to torment people with. Oh, but but, but okay. it's a drake. I mean, it's, you know, I still... <laughs> my OCD will not allow me not to get it. I mean... <laughs> well, I think, that's, I think that's the case for most people who play Yak Track, honestly. <laughs> right. Like... I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what's off. Where's my big Yak friend that's given me the uh, mission at the start? It's been replaced by just a mere human. <laughs> that's that's something as well. Uh, yep. Um, They're taking the yak job. But instead, you got the yeah. unwinged uh, harbinger, uh, harbinger of jazz, and unwinged harbinger of when uh, titles as well. I think that's the first time Yak Track has given out a title. I don't like the title. Do you, do you like the title, Shane? I mean, I'm not a huge title I'm not a, person no, anyway but like no. but the unwinged bit of a mouthful the, the unwinged what of harbinger. I mean, har- I don't know like harbinger of death destruction I ah, guess cool okay but not but not like I don't know it's not really it doesn't feel like an incentive it doesn't feel like a reward to me no and, you know, we, we are saying it feels empty, but I did say that all of the um, cosmetics that you do get from it look wonderful. And I think at this point, um, I'll say that other things that you get from this are your usual suspects of things like some sealed clue scrolls and protein packs, a few oddments here and there, lamps, bonus XP stars, cash bag. Um, at the end, also task 50, um, you get death touch darts, two of them. Let's go to the ambassador. (laughs) You also get, uh, three knowledge bombs, which is item that gives 50% XP boost for one hour. So that's what direction they're going with this one. And rather than boosting specific skills by one or 2%, this yak track boosts all skills and... It starts by rewarding 1% every few tasks, and then at the very, very end of it, at the very, very end of it, you get another 16% bulk boost at task 50 for a total of a 50% XP boost. All right, let's dive into this, because this has been the controversial part. How do you feel, Here we go. Here we go. How do you feel? Who wants to start? Go for you. Me. Yeah. Um, I think this is... Uh, look, eventually we're going to have to fundamental, fundamentally change the way that we think about XP in this game. Um, is it a lot because of the double XP weekends <laughs> and the bonus XP and this and that? Yes, of course, if we look at it in pure numbers, but uh, XP just it, it, you can't look at it in just a, a pure number anymore. Um, it's more about the rate. It's more tied to time than it than at you know ever really before. Um, now what you're looking at, you know, these it's it's a period of of, of time that that you're going to get that boost. Um, it's very similar. I, I know I say this a lot, but it is similar in a lot of other games where um, you're looking at the rate of, of 
gain, the rate, you know, of your level gain, the rate of the XP that you're gaining. Oh, sorry, it's a 25% buff at, at 50, not 50%. Right. I messed that up. Anyways. Right. But it's for, what, two weeks? Uh, 40 days. 40 if, days. If you okay. were to complete it on day one. And this is where it gets interesting because the faster you complete the act track, the longer you have that XP boost for, that 25% boost. All right. So and then therein lies an incentive to try to skip as many as you possibly can. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm actually I'm in a really weird spot right now in my runescape <laughs> life where XP is a little bit less important than it than it used to be. Um but yeah. I see it as as more of a time management tool akin to what you see in Stow in Elder Scrolls, in you name it. Um, this looks more like a battle pass um, in some other games, uh, especially with the kind of reduction in the cosmetics. Um, I don't know. I, I This is part of the process of, of change, in my opinion, but I'm guessing people are going to be coming, kicking, and screaming. Yeah, and you know, I I always I really don't care about what other people have for their XP boost, so this doesn't bother me. But we need to, like you said, put this in perspective of what modern XP gains look like. And is a twenty five percent buff a really a lot and something to write home about? Well, I think you gotta look at it at the goal for us when we started the goal line was 99 it was 13 yeah. mil yeah. xp that is that is not the goal for a lot of skills that are actual legit 120s but then but everyone knows how xp works now i mean everyone if you're looking for xp if you're being a skiller you don't stop at 99 um yeah so uh, to me it, it's it's a whole different scale that's why i mean it's more about the rate that you can accomplish with you know, whatever time that you have available to you. Um, that's what I'm saying. A lot of times, like in other games, you, you'll get like an experience scroll, right? Where for the next two hours, you get a 5% buff or you get a 15. So mm -hmm. be it. it comes in many forms, different ways. This is RuneScape's way that they're doing it, I guess. But um, I mean, most of the time you're running around with some kind of bonus XP or some kind of, you know, maximization of that XP anyway. Um, I, I, ju I don't know. I, I just think it's bringing us more in line with what a traditional modern. battle pass looks like. Yeah. All right. How about you, R, man? Oh, I'm, I'm getting numb to it. Eh? I just, <laughs> if this was a year ago, I'd probably be outraged. But as we were speaking in the pre-show, we had a double XP weekend uh, and I sort of forgot it was even there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's just, they're just uh, easing us into it, I think, and it's sort of just going to be a constant flow, as Tannis was <laughs> sort of saying. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I can I can see some of the concerns on this one because we did have a we did have a good discussion on this uh, this week um, in the Discord. And what's effectively happening with this is that. If we go back to our last monthly bit, which everybody should listen to at patreon.com slash rsbnb, we decided that the core game loop of RS, the core meaning of why, of why you want to play, is you set that goal, and then you find a way to do that goal, and then it repeats itself. And that starts off from the very beginning when you first arrive in Berthor. And that's what RuneScape defines itself on. Setting a goal and achieving it. Now... Yak track can help people do that exact same thing. And I think that's why I like it is because it provides me a way to play. But if you look at the end of at the end of task fifty, you're getting a twenty five percent XP boost. Which means is that inherently by completing Yak track, the goal that you're setting yourself is to get more XP by completing it. In addition, of course, to all the cosmetics. And this was the discussion that Sirion and I had on it. And 
with that, you have to realize is that this is going to start feeding back on itself because if the whole goal is to get XP and not necessarily set a goal and accomplish that, then we're starting to lose what the core loop of RuneScape is specifically with this Yak Track. And that's, I think, if you were to boil this down to the ultra-technical, aside from everybody screaming and all the general noise that you find online, I think that is the problem with doing XP boosts like this on Yak Track, is that it makes the goal to get that XP boost at the end, in some cases, rather than doing the individual tasks to push your skills further in each yak track task, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. Like one of the things that we liked about yak track was the the content that it brings to the yeah, game. Yeah, the content that it brings to, to the game. But now the, the goal of yak track is to just increase your XP multiplier. Because the faster you get it done, the longer you have exactly. it. Exactly. But see, this is what that's what I'm talking about, though, Shane. Like the players that are after that kind of an experience are going to get that kind of experience. For the players that are not after that kind of experience and really could give a shit less, they're going to mosey on through it like they always have. Right, but there um, is actually a problem with that this time, and. This is something you also alluded to, our man, in the in the pre-show is that maybe there's too many skill and kill ta- tasks this time. I know we've been asking for more of them, but twenty of the tasks are skill and kill, and in some places they're right back one after the other. Yeah, I never thought I'd be saying that. Like but the, it definitely feels like there's too like many. Obvi- <laughs> obviously, you're going to have a choice, but sometimes you're just going to do skill and kill because you don't want to do what else is up there. But sometimes you do want the Yak Track content to make the choice for you. Yeah, let's hope it just doesn't end up being like 50 skill and kills. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, I don't think that would be I don't I don't think that would be a good thing. I'm currently on task fourteen and based on what I see here, that's three, four, five uh, six. There have been there have been six skill and kill tasks prior to task fifteen. Which, if you're counting going up to thirteen, that's just under fifty percent of them have been skill and kill. Which I can understand the the allure of that in terms of making it easier to progress through it. But at the same time, maybe we need to instead be focusing on using this as providing direction. But. I'm just airing both sides of the of the coin here because personally I don't mind if it's skill and kill, but looking at task 16, for example, you either got to get 200k crafting XP at level 99 crafting or complete 90 minutes of playing RuneScape. I think I'm going to choose play 90 minutes of RuneScape with that rather than getting uh, 200k crafting XP. Task 17 is also skill and kill. Once again, 90 minutes of RS or fletch 1,000 bows at level 99. Ooh. You don't want to Not much of a choice bows? there. <laughs> no. no. Yeah, exactly. So like I said, I've been using more skip tokens this time around. All right, that's fair. Um, but overall, I'm going to say I don't see what the outrage is, aside from if you're looking at it from the goal perspective like Sirion was. Yeah, and the changing of the tasks, which I guess we're coming up to soon as well. Yeah, and I mean, you know what? Hell with it. I'll just play devil's advocate here. You You know what the concern is, I bet, online, in particular in specific circles that sometimes shall not be named? Oh, yeah, More it's microtransactions. For- In that, if you can entice people with the twenty five percent XP boost, get task fifty, you might have some people who are more enticed to spend bonds and spend on skips. True. And true. And to that effect, maybe this whole thing is an A B test to see if they get more skips being spent on this kind of yak track than they did previous ones to get to that XP boost at the end. 
maybe that's what's going on here. And I think that that's what people are concerned about. I'm per- I'm personally not concerned about it, that it pushes the idea of microtransactions within the act track further. But I think that's what people are concerned about if I was playing devil's advocate. Okay. Well, let's think about this then, people that are concerned about that. Luckily for you, we have four double XP weekends that are 10 days long every year now. So the XP is actually more accessible than it ever has. And um, paying for a little 25% boost, that's actually smaller than what you get if you just play the game normally for free or, you know, for your membership. So uh, nothing to see here. <laughs> that that look like a problem. Do you, do you think they're going to have this uh, boost on all the act tracks? Because we're going to have bonus XP like every no. day of the year. <laughs> I I would. I mean, the interesting is probably back. right. It it could be an an A B test. Um, mm. The problem I I think what they'll find the problem is is I don't think the engagement will be there because like I said it felt like there was something missing because I just wasn't enticed and to really caring that much i mean except for the drake um you yeah, know i'm like that like the 25 percent. this wasn't a big deal to me but i i, I think i don't think i'm alone um so all you're doing is getting the people that would pay regardless um, yeah and, and, and you if know, people want to do that whatever I think the I think the classic Yak track with the Tim and Crunchy stuff in it had a huge level of engagement because people love that. I also think the Saren and Zaros Yak tracks also had wonderful engagement in it as well, uh, just because it themes so well and people a love the Crystal Elf look for the Saren one and everybody else of course loves Zaros when it came to the Yak to the Shadows. Mm-hmm. So I, I I and plus I I just don't think there's that much affinity out there. Um, for jazz and when and that could be that could be impacting in this too yeah i mean there there's definitely a motivation problem <laughs> um, I, I, I don't i don't, think I don't feel that i don't feel the that. same way but that's okay, because well, i'm playing this for i'm playing it for the skilling side All right. All right, man. Do you feel more or less motivated to play this one compared to other ones? Uh, probably, probably about the same. Maybe a little less. But um, as I was saying, I brought my friend back to the game. I actually gave him the two bonds to uh, join in. So we're sort of racing on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's so, one way of doing it. <laughs> there's a little bit of an addition there. But funnily enough, he didn't know <laughs> this is the, this is a good story. He didn't realize how it worked, and he used all his skip tokens in the first ten tasks. <laughs> Oops! Uh, like, yeah. So uh, lucky he's taking it like a champ, and he just said, um, "Oh, you know, I like a challenge. We'll see how uh, the task fifty goes." <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have fun with that one, though. It's not too bad this time. Uh, that's either four hundred k archaeology XP or three thousand marks of war. Oh, I know where I'll be. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I, I think we covered what the, what the concerns are for that. It's just a, it's just a question of if it's going to pan out to be that way in terms of, you know, being a gateway to more microtransactions. And, and I think that's the way the community that shall not be named always sees this sort of thing. Yep. But at the same time, yeah. If people really don't engage towards that XP boost at the end, the act track will probably go back to how it was. But like you said, Tannis, 25% XP boost is not a lot in this day and age. You can get more by spending on Treasure Hunter um, buying bonus XP stars. Yeah, Yeah. buying the skip tokens would probably be inefficient. There you go. There you go. All right, um, let's have a look at some of the tasks here then, because this is something people always um, love to point out. The rune crafting tasks are still there, as they were. Rune crafting XP, sad face from me on that one. 
Mm. Um, woodcutting, fire making, mining tasks, those are always good. Mine or um, 280 at eight, level 18, that's really not too bad. Um, cooking, 650 at 21. Thieving tasks have been turned from thieving actions into just base thieving XP. I have a feeling that's going to make them longer, uh, specifically if you're going to be out there uh, doing things like L's. You're going to have to change this now to safe cracking, I think, for the thieving tasks. Herblore. Herblore. You no longer are asked to make a certain amount of potions. You're just asked to get a certain amount of XP. Yes. <laughs> so good. Yeah, that's that's better because, you know, at some point, you know, being asked to make a thousand plus level 107 potions really isn't that economical at certain mm. points. So I'm glad this one is actually XP now. I think it makes sense here to do this. But in a one I'm not that pleased about, archaeology tasks are now base XP only. Gone are the uh, excavation and restoration and uh, sift soil tasks. Oh, I'm going to miss those ones. Yeah. It's a lot longer to get straight up XP in archaeology. Maybe I'll sell all that sand I had uh, piled up. Can that still make a decent amount of money? <laughs> yep. Actually, if you look at the automated money making guide on the wiki, yep. uh, sifting. Sifting the soil with the Sift Soil spell is actually a very good moneymaker. Ooh. <laughs> I bet we didn't anticipate that happening. No, definitely not. So. Further yeah. further from that, um, the... Oh, we already went over Herblore and Thieving, so... Mm, oh, specific smelting tasks have been removed, and all smithing tasks will gain XP. Missed that one. Oh yes, I think that's good because I mean smelting is something you're you're always going to be doing, but it's just better to get that XP in doing that. So now, one final thing I think before we move on from the act track here, the cultist journey tasks are back. Speaking to the curator in Berthorp, and this time you are learning about elder god cultists. Who we learn that there's a new cult in RuneScape that's worshipping the Elder Gods, specifically Jazz and Wen. And in particular, the people who doing the worshipping are the Ham cult, the Humans Against Monster cult. Now we'll have a we'll have a full dive into what the lore means on this after uh, a few of us complete Yak Track. But oh boy, little did we know that they would dive in on this and make it so that RuneScape would have its own segment of the population worshipping Elder Gods, and I have a horrible feeling about the way they're taking this. I feel Are like... Are afraid if... I'm, I'm afraid go, that, go, they're gonna, us, that they're going to paint these ham people as the stereotypical religious crazies, as some people call them. Uh, see, I'm thinking they're, they're the Hamanons, you know. They probably... Or that... Uh huh. Oh man, which which is hilarious, right? I mean, definitely some sort of reference there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I'm I'm not sure that they should be making uh, that kind of that kind of link, honestly, because when you're dealing with that uh, segment of the population who does believe in those kind of ideas, that's something that should not be dismissed because in order to work with those kind of people. You don't do it through belittling and mocking. So that's why I sincerely hope that this is not the direction uh, this is going. Come on, man. The game that has Monty Python and all kinds of other shit, no. Come on now, a little RuneScape humor. Put your big boy britches on and get the fuck over it, seriously. Like, you gotta tell people that shit. You, you got to. You're, you're, come on, man. Like, you're the free speech guy. I am, but I think it, if that's, and to be fair, I haven't, I've only done one of these, so I don't know if that's the direction it's going to go. But I think it's something we have to be very careful about. Well, how do you think it's going to end? 
I don't know at this point, and I don't want to does speculate. He, does he storm the Elder Dungeon or something? I, <laughs> I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> no, they're going to bust in the, the kitchen at Lumbridge, and <laughs> they're going to go in the basement. <laughs> He's just gonna start shooting just crossbow darts. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> See, you would love it if it would have went that way. Personally, I think that's a huge mistake. If it if it were to go that way, and that's so far off the wall, I doubt it would. You know, I think when things are are <laughs> so nonsensical, all you can do is laugh. Sometimes when things are oh, that's so what bad, I tried to all you tell can people. do is laugh. So. I don't think there's ever a bad time for a laugh, and I just, you know? Oh, yeah, I think we're just going to have to stand down and stand by, see what happens. Yeah. Oh, Shane, my, my favorite, have you ever have you ever watched um, Deadpool? No. You know what my favorite, okay, well, there's this part in Deadpool. Of course he hasn't. That, yeah, right? <laughs> there's, this, there's a part in Deadpool where he has, like, what is it, like his friend, she's blind, you know? Yeah. And I'm blind. <laughs> And before he leaves, he's like, hey, I hit a pound of cocaine and, and the cure to blindness <laughs> somewhere in this room. Good luck. <laughs> should should I be offended? Because it was my favorite part of the whole goddamn movie. <laughs> Laugh my ass off. I'm not saying that it's, it's <laughs> something to be offended about. I'm saying that there's a higher duty in order to... Um, effectively bring the temperature down, and I don't think we should be mocking anybody, regardless of what they believe. So no, we're I not, hope we it can't. doesn't go that way. We, we, if we're gonna, no, I mean, if we're gonna talk about like some kind of a duty of care implications, and that's that's, that's precisely what it would fall time. under. Yeah, that's and, precisely what it would fall under. Thank you for that. But we can't like take a. I mean. Uh, that that's hard. That's hard to take a stand there when there's, you know, uh, to to be to be um continued. Oh yeah. Oh bit. yeah. There are, there are other things that you know I wanted to bring up on this same similar vein. Uh, ways Jagex has approached things. Uh, in particular, a few weeks back on the podcast, but the time for that has. Uh, come and gone. I don't know if I complain to you about that, Tannis, but I'll I'll share more about that um, later. I, I don't think it's worth uh, putting it into the show at this point now, but it it is in that same similar vein that we need to, in, in effect, just be mindful of these sorts of things. And I, I think for one instance, Jagex was not. So I hope that uh, the lore tasks in this Yank track do not go that way. Kind of, kind of got me interested now. I'm never interested in law. <laughs> I want to see where this goes now. <laughs> well, hey, I think I've done. I think I've done the second one. So, but yeah, yeah, and I, yeah, oh, I'm, in, I'm interested. They got me. Good, good. All right, let's move on to some patch notes then um, for the week because uh, we, we do have a few of these. And what was really interesting about this week's patch notes is that uh, one of the, one of the patches it actually didn't make its way into the game and i jumped up and down when i saw this but when i saw it wasn't a game i was very sad and disappointed the patch note read as follows updated the mobile and desktop chat system to use the noto sans font type expanded the chat font size to include types between values between 10 and 22 incrementing by values of two so what this means is we would have finally got vector-based chat in-game, but it was not there when I opened the client this week. So here's hoping it arrives next week. See, that confused me. I read it the same way. I was yeah. like, wait a minute. We but should the font be able didn't to change the font. Week. But yeah, okay. At least I'm not crazy. Right. And that's the whole reason I put this in here is because this would have been massive had it been in-game, but it wasn't here. Did they forget? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think the patch note probably just went in a week too soon, or who knows. Mm. So, but um, I'm going to be out on the watch for this, of course. Uh, continuing on, Santistan Archaeology, beautiful stained glass windows now appear in Santistan's Cathedral. Those are missing uh, last week. So if you repair the window, you wouldn't see the stained glass, which was a little bit disconcerting, but that's now been fixed. 
On mobile, when sending a private message from the friends list, your chat window will now automatically switch to the private tab. Likewise, sending messages to other channels will now switch you to that channel. And the friends chat and clan chat lists are now visually consistent with all other chat options on mobile. Now, as for the birth or path, adjusted the background color on the activity tracker ribbon from blue to green to match the quest icon and adventures parent ribbon button. Additionally, tooltips for the ribbon buttons no longer overlapped and are positioned based on the location of the ribbon. You know, that actually makes sense to have it be the same color as its parent menu. So this is actually a really good change. And it just shows that, you know, there are there are these instances where lightning does strike, despite everybody always giving Jagex a whole lot of trouble uh, for their UI choices. Finally, uh, user interface tutorial pop-ups on desktop now use the same font size as on mobile so that tutorial's text is more comfortable to read and digest. Good. Now here's a doozy of a patch note. Magic dice no longer stall the player's actions or script cues, such as incoming damage. Performing another action, such as moving to another location, will cancel that dice roll. So a bit of background for this one. The magic dice is what you get at various milestone um, unlocks from the quest point shop, and those magic dice give you a roll on the treasure trail loot table. So what this means is that somebody would be able to keep consistently, prior to this patch note, rolling their magic dice and stalling what the game would be doing, including things such as using this to block incoming damage. The things people find... (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, now wait a minute. Did it? Did they patched it though. Yes, it's been patched. Is there a way that we can incorporate this into our normal rotation <laughs> um, for greater <laughs> DPS? <laughs> We're just saying, Shane. Maybe it's not a bug. I mean, maybe switch, maybe, switch maybe, maybe you're not looking at it properly. Maybe it's really the new meta. Of how combat oh, so, works. So rather than defenders now, we just need to add an offhand dice that you activate its ability and block damage I mean, it wouldn't be in-game if they didn't intend it to be that way, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the new meta. Oh. You see a dice for animation, a dice dance. <laughs> I can just see that in the middle of combat. You take this. And for anybody wondering... It's snake eyes. <laughs> Tannis is big. A hundred percent joking here because we had this huge discussion, whether it was last week or the week before, I think the week before, about how um people found a way of stun- standing stunning standing underneath Carapac to block his damage from one of his attacks, and the community cried out, and it effectively became part of a new mechanics on Carapac because the community cried out. So you're right. Maybe if you know people cried out about this, we could get some offhand dice. <laughs> Never know. But, you know, this this just underscores how there's always things that pop up in game and bug or not, players just need to learn to accept, I think, that when things aren't working as intended, they're going to be fixed. And... I think Jagex is far too lenient on that, as we discussed a few weeks ago. So I I, I appreciate you bringing some lightheartedness to this to this episode, Tennis. Hey, and on the bright side, I mean, how many people could this possibly affect? I mean, questing yeah. and PBM. That's like what? That's Taxi that's basic, and David. Maybe it's basically like, clan like quest. three guys, right? I mean, basically clan quest. Yeah, take like, that. The Reddit, the house always wins. <laughs> Yeah, right. That should honestly Got on this time. <laughs> that should honestly be the motto uh when it comes to bug 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 hunting. That would yeah. be a good good motto. <laughs> Else always wins, yeah. Wake and dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Well I enjoyed that one. Uh but I just wanna just thank all our Patreon supporters this week because without you guys we wouldn't get to have fun laughs like that. We wouldn't get to uh, talk about the impending doom as the community sees it when it comes to Yak Track. So this week, I'd like to thank 
Amos Reed, Andrew C, Arvid Zell, Brock H, Kristen S, Chunk the Monk, Cook Me Plunks, Diana, Drama Free, Duramax, Free Milk, Jade Gizmo, Jason S, Jesse W, Kesky, Lucky Ducky, Nate the Great, Parnassius, Ren Hong, Ricky A, Samuel F L, Scott D S, Soup Finder, Stub Eve, The Bears O P, The Naked Captain, The Lion, Tom V, and Zant. Thank you all of you for your support. It truly means the world to us, and we love putting these Patreon specials together uh, for you. Our current one that we uh, just wrapped the poll on was the monthly bit for September, which you guys voted overwhelmingly for the one titled Clue Scrolls and Money. So we'll be putting that together over the next week, and it should arrive on your Patreon feeds by the end of the month. Or, sorry, by the end of, uh, not the end of September, it should arrive by the end of the first week of September, I mean. So, thank you so much, everybody. If you want to learn more about this, uh, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash rsbnb, where you can join for as little as a dollar a month. You gain um, full access to the back catalog of monthly bits, and you help fund the cost for hosting and production of RSBNB Update. For $3 a month, you'll receive a special VIP rank on the Discord and a special mention on the podcast at the start of the month, in addition to high-quality stereo versions of the podcast, in addition to everything else. And if you want to go up one more tier for $5 a month, you'll receive a shout-out each and every week, and you will gain exclusive access to the outtakes that we use to make the clip show at the end of the year. So if all this sounds fun, you can check us out at patreon.com. Slash RSBNB, and of course we are working to that massive goal <laughs> of that Hot Ones Challenge. Should we ever reach that $500 a month uh, challenge, Tannis and I will subject our taste buds to a whole range of spice. And I gotta ask you, R, man, are you a fan, fan of <laughs> I the <wouldn't>. spice? <laughs> no, 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 definitely not, but I definitely want to see that. I've seen firsthand, I bought my brother one of the sauces. It wasn't the hottest one, I think it was the bomb, I think it's one of the... Tennis knows it's probably. Bomb, yeah, I think it's one of the top ones. Like, and uh, yeah, he, he's a big fan of spice, but uh, yeah, no, he uh, he only tried it once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Good to know. Get there, guys. So Good to know. Uh, well, if you, you want... know, we're gonna like lose layers of, of of tongue skin. Like it's we're never gonna be the same. I think I'll be fine. He says that now. I think I'll be fine. But in any case, check us out at patreon.com slash rsbnb. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Thanks. All right. So we knew the next front was on the way, and lots of people were asking when it would be. But no, it turns out that it's actually the Glacier front. Not the when it'll be. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the preview video for this now because uh, we, we have a lot to talk about about this, uh, even, even before it launches. So have a listen to this. The Glacier Front coming August 31st. And there's a lot to unpack with this. Obviously, this is, this is going to be Wen's army. Um, a new, huge, icy arch glacier, they're calling it. And I want to get this big one out of the way first. This is, this is going to be, the arch glacier is going to be a scalable boss in what they're calling a first for RuneScape that lets you toggle on and off specific mechanics to customize the um, difficulty. To enable or disable a mechanic, you talk to one of the mages and give them an opportunity to rest out or bring them back into the battle. And the more mechanics you have enabled, the better the rewards will be, and the harder the fight, 
it will be. The goal of this power dampening system is designed to help players who are new to PVM learn key boss mechanics one by one or in a combination. Okay, so let's deal with this first. All right, man, you're not a PVMer. Are you into this? Oh, I'm so into this. How come we haven't had this before? This is genius. You, who needs training mode? You can just go and get in there, go up to the wizards, um, say, sorry, guys, no breaks. You're like Amazon workers. You're all in, and just make the boss fight super easy to start with. Oh, I'm so pumped. Here's a bottle. <laughs> yeah, here's a bottle. Have a bottle. <laughs> Uh, tennis, you're feeling a bit blue, though. You feeling know, a little, a little blue. There's a, a lot, lot of blue, blue and a lot a of white. A lot of blue. I can't <sighs> not see it now. It's too much. <laughs> Even it, it's too much. It's the tale of two designs, right? In one, in one way, um, and I mean, who knows? This could all change on Monday when it's released. But mm. um, on one hand, so much care was taken. Um, to address some of the things from an accessibility angle, um, you know, with being able to turn off mechanics because, um, you know, difficulty is a factor. Um, that you know, you're, you it gives you help, but then you turn around, you see the trailer, mm. it's a sea of blue, and then there's some more blue when you're done with that. So the test will be. Do they have enough, um, are there enough things, opportunities in game where I will be able to manipulate things to be able to actually see it? Right, because Telos actually has a uh, colorblind mode. Yeah, that's, I mean, and it's not a true colorblind no, kind of obviously deal not. On, on RuneScape, um, but... I'm hoping from the way that looks and the way that the the blues are, um, I might be able to use the skyboxes and filters to kind of um, make that pop and stand out. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this is something I, uh, Sirion actually ran the trailer through a contrast analyzer and the contrast was actually way, way lower than it needs to be. Uh, to meet accessibility standards. So that's going to be very concerning, uh, I think. But, you know, it could be entirely different when you get your hands on it. So we'll wait to pass full judgment on that uh, next week. And the mechanics are called Creeping Ice, which they say teaches basic movement. The Glaciate Minions, which is Ariane's mechanic. Tell her to rest, it'll turn it on. This adds management and target switching. Flurry teaches prayer flicking and reading animations, but not through the entire fight. This is with Ariane Win. Pillars of Ice teaches advanced movement and kiting. Um, And this is with uh, Ekthonikos. The Frost Cannon mechanic teaches shield switching and resonance slash defensive. And this is through Charos. <laughs> what was that? Turn that one off. <laughs> yeah. Um, exposed core, which is DPS and survival. Um, this is Anakra. And then finally, there's hard mode, which is with Azinadra. If you tell him to rest, it will enable all mechanics and add additional changes that up the difficulty even further. And unlike Carapac, hard mode is a solo only experience. And it's also a bit further up that uh, boss massing is enabled in the normal mode, I think. Yeah. So you can have as many people as you want. Yeah. And I mean, that's, 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 uh, you're going to find the perfect level for that, I think, mm. which is, which is really good. And, you know, I think we've needed something like this for a long time. Uh, on the PVM side, we just, of course, have to hope that with this, that um, it will be something that's novel. And at the end of the day, it'll be something that's re- repeatable enough that it can actually teach PVM. So fingers crossed on all this. But we're getting tier 95 melee weapons out of this, uh, dual handed tier 95 melee weapons out of this from hard mode. So, first with Carapac, it was. Um, Magic that went to 95, now Malie is going to tier 95. 
And based on this, we're, I'm guessing you're probably going to want to use magic to take this thing down, considering there's a whole bunch of mages that are helping you with this. So mm. that's what I'll be getting ready for on Monday, or come Monday. I'm still working on my tier 92 speed. Right? Like, <laughs> come on, guys. Right? Uh, yeah. And- like, this isn't power creep. This is power keep up. This power keep. <laughs> well, <laughs> keep up. It's going to have a special attack with it as well. Um, we need to just be 100% clear on this, and this is just to allay your concerns here, Tannis, is that every boss in game right now can be done with Tier 90 equipment. No questions asked. Tier 90 equipment, definitely. And the jump from Tier 90 to Tier 92 is about 2 to 3%, and the jump from 92 to 95 is about that same 2 to 3%. So you're, it's probably going to be around 5 to 6% buff over your Tier 90 weaponry. So it's not, it's not something that you and I need. Not- and... If anything, this is a good thing because tier 90 should go down even cheaper with this. Hey. Because Let's people will, will bring their increased power of the tier 95 staff and the tier 95 melee weapons now to all the other bosses, Ooh. presumably causing other things to go down, would be my bet. So I, I don't, think we, need, I don't think we need to fret about <laughs> the tier 95s. Nah, well, no. So Kopesh. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but I don't think you need to do that because it's still going to be a very good weapon. A very good melee weapon. Though on that note, I should buy some magic power armor because I don't actually own any magic power armor currently. So that will be a task for this weekend. So um, I I'm can't not, wait to hear about it. Yeah, I'm not going to go too much more into uh, this, but I, I, I think we got the core aspects of this down. Um, biggest one being the skilling boss, second one being it's Wen's general, and we get to see a huge chunk of the city of Sintistan frozen in ice. I'm looking Which forward to this. Epic. Oh, and there's also going to be gonna... Slayer creatures, too. Of course, as with any God Wars front. I, I, I feel like I should have mentioned that, but I, I guess <laughs> it's probably obvious if you're just reading along here. So I just hope it ain't more Glakers. That was the biggest disappointment to me. Yeah, and was that a reason for that, the color change? Yeah, I could never tell which one was the endearing. Right. Um, which was the one you're supposed to do last. Yeah. It was total luck, and I didn't have very good luck. Um, but I was excited about it, because back then, it was like a, it was this real good money maker. You yeah, know? So they're... I went through all those, all those, Quest They're actually one of the Slayer tasks that I like. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. it is with me and Slayer. I, I like these big Slayer tasks that uh, are almost boss level, but not. Like the Lost Grove creatures were good, I think. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, the dinosaurs and whatnot, but we're getting off track here. But, of course, we'll be back next week. We'll have all the mechanics ranging from the very bottom for people like myself and our men who just want to go in and learn the thing. All the way up to the sweaty PVM types who will be taking on hard mode each day. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, before you finish here, there's um. I was just checking because I was I remember hearing it, but the normal mode has permanent safe deaths. Oh yeah, right. That's yeah. like a that's quite a big deal we skipped there. <laughs> yeah. That's a big deal. That's yeah, a BFD, that... man. Mm. And it, and it's all part of the part of teaching those combat mechanics, I think. So and different. You get rewards for that too, right? Mm. Now wait a minute, though. Is, is that how What's I'm the... reading that? Is that if? Wait a minute, though. Now, if you the art... if you're in normal mode, it's a safe death, and it's normal mode as long as you don't have all the mechanics turned off, right? I I think um, I think normal mode can be any range of the mechanics, and I think there's a I assume there's a separate hard mode. Yeah, as an yeah. Andra. Yeah. So, yeah, so, whew, that's interesting. <laughs> now, wait, I always thought the argument for having big drops on PVM was because of this whole because of the risk. risk. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> we'll have to see what the drop table looks like and how it scales with this, honestly. Those the ninety fives are gonna be locked to the hard mode. Yes, though, those they? are definitely yes. locked to the yeah. hard mode. Um mm. and it's just a question of what you're gonna be able to get mm. if you are running, you know, just one mechanic or training wheels yeah. mode effectively. No mechanics. It'd be very right? interesting to see how it scales. And I wouldn't want to be the dev in charge of that drop table, honestly. No. (laughs) Another thing I'm wondering with this is if there's going to be another upgrade to the Pontifex Signet um, ring, like we had with uh, the note on front. Because remember, the upgrade for the note on front made one of Carapac's attacks not stun. I wonder if that'll happen here, too modify one of the oh. attacks or if it, maybe they'll I modify would, something else I, will, I don't think it would come in that form because you can turn we already have mechanic control yeah you can turn on or off but it probably lets you get safely past the new revamped Claker mobs apparently yeah well, I'm just I'm also really excited to see what the last two two bosses will be because these two are quite different. So a, um, I was talking, talking in the chat earlier in the week, and someone was going, maybe there could be like a mini ED boss for one of them. And then maybe another one, <laughs> maybe, probably no, could be actually a sculling boss. Come on. <laughs> oh, you're thinking for the uh, for the uh, Bic and Full Front? Yeah, I'm just wondering if they're going to be different as well. So you yeah. basically got like the first boss is a classic sort of hard, crazy boss. Uh, this I, one's I think training. if they were going to do a sculling boss, they'd probably do it for the Bic Front because we know... Um, that the czar are um, full's tool. So I think the best thing to have for a full boss would be um, a reimagining of what Jad would be like in 2021. Oh, it has to. Oh. Has to. Can't, can't wait to see. Or maybe even just a reimagining of the original uh, fight caves for that in a more condensed mm. format. Rather than the hour or so it would take before, just, you know, condense it down to a five to ten minute fight. Something like that. Yeah. I think that would be uh, really interesting to do for the full front. But we will, of course, have all the details on this next week. But, you know, the Elder God Wars continues on as we head into week five of the gods of Saren, Saradoman, Armadil, and Zamorak just chatting amongst themselves and you know just casually putting at risk the world as we know it so starting off this week Saren says I honestly never thought I'd see the day where elven reinforcements are beginning to arrive and the reports I have heard surprised me I hear of Iworth and Kadarn elves greeting one another sharing tales of home even laughing Armadale says, forgive me, but is that unusual? Do they not live together in Piftinus? She says, yes, but there has been conflict between them for generations. There are those who remember too well the misdeeds of the old Ironworth, and those who long for the glorious bygone days of war. Armadale says, there's still tension between the clans then. Indeed, Saren says, but at the prospect of this battle, all of that seems to have dissipated. Sad that it takes a world-ending threat to truly bring us together. Zamrak says, mark my words. When this is over, your elves will be back at each other's throats. I don't know if that's a threat. <laughs> or if that's a thinly veiled threat or what the hell's going on with that. I, mean, yeah, I don't feel like it's a threat. What I did feel was like, you know, it's too bad that they they went to the well too many times on this because... I feel like this would have more of a punch if Tuska hadn't already came and supposedly, you know, I mean, that was the whole thing, right? We all had to fight together yeah. and so on and so yeah. forth. Uh, um, I mean, this kind of feels like Avengers part 18, you know. But it gets slightly more ominous when uh, Sarah Doman and Armadale chime in because Sarah Doman says some rare mortals might look after one another, offset one's uh, foibles 
but they are also self-serving and weak. Inevitably, we must always intervene. Armadillo says, must we? We are but their basest we are but their basest instincts and greediest aspirations, writ large and given flesh. Sarah Doman says we offer wisdom, guidance, protection. Armadale says we bring livery to divide communities, dogma to justify murder, power to lust after, and worst, we do so despite our best efforts, just by being what we are. Zamorak, cough, cough. Well, most of us do. Sarah Doman says, did war become a thing in the past when we were in exile? I think not. If left to their own devices, mortals would destroy one another, destroy themselves. Armadale says, mortals are far from perfect. It's so true, but so are we. The last thing they need is our guidance. Saren says, I once knew another who thought as you do, Armadale. Sarah Doman says, yes, and look what that led to. Guthix's reticence to intervene enabled the greatest loss of life ever seen on Gielinor. Caused by a god. That one right there, pointing at Zamorak. Zamorak says, guilty. Don't you, don't pretend you wouldn't do something similar if pushed. Then Saren winds us off saying, one thing is certain. We cannot abandon Gielinor in its current state. We gods must undo the damage we have wrought. If we survive, then we atone. Until then, we allow the people any moments of light and warmth they can find because it's about to become very dark and very cold. Very dark and very cold, of course, foreshadowing um, the glacier front in terms of the cold. But one of the winter's things... Winter's coming. What? Winter is coming. Yeah, of course winter's coming. And it could be very dangerous this year. <laughs> Oh, can't be any worse than the uh, end of Game of Thrones. <laughs> no, I never watched that show, so I'm not entirely sure what you're uh, going after. Oh, just disappointment with this. <laughs> but at the end of it, at the end of all this, it, it definitely seems that um, the gods, at least in Armadale sense, realized that you know they they caused their own set of the problems around this, and Sarah Doman himself of course wants to intervene but it, it, yet again it's that armadillo and sarah doman or saren rather all taking up different pieces of the mantle that we've seen over the last five weeks and this is getting very very interesting i think for these two as we've kind of alluded to on past discussions of this so, i want to see what happens next and see if there's any interesting dialogue come um monday uh for the glacier front because i imagine there's definitely going to be uh words to be spoken about this but do you guys have anything else uh uh on this before we move on nope all right fair enough well we got a new treasure hunter promo the first time in a long time gifts of the creator did you guys open Treasure Hunter this week? I did. Yeah. How do you feel daily. about this one? Boring. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, a bit basic, I but I guess. <laughs> the reason you say boring and basic is that whenever you open a key, you're going to be given three options only a medium lamp, a medium star, or three mini protein packs. It doesn't for, change, does it? And for no, it doesn't change. And for each yeah. uh, key you spend, you're guaranteed these choices without any variation on that. And on top of these, gift of the creators also has a reward track with other red, orange, and red and purple prizes throughout this that are given off at um, specific intervals. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work out too well. Okay. Can I ask why not? Um, because I don't think it's got enough of. Look, I would like to just see those sitting in the Ottoman store. Period. See, I thought you would but, like this this promo because it's all basic right. stuff in terms of lamps and XP and proteins. I I do, I do, but 
I also I'm also a realist that there's not much of a um, endorphin rush here for <laughs> <laughs> the people that are looking for that cuz you're going to get the I mean it is the same thing every time. But if you're looking for consistency, great. Um Yeah. And but, you know, put simply this is a test to see if they if people will just, you know, flat up buy XP. Mm. That's what this is a test for. I think. Yeah, you're not wrong. Because you put money in and you're going to get out either some protein items, which feel like the consolation prize, or bonus XP, or XP. Yeah, they're the best. <laughs> so it feels like it's a test to just see how many people would be interested in just buying straight up XP. And I know there's lots of people out there who probably don't want to hear that, but that's the way I see this one. As but, being. Uh, one of this Shane's A-B tests. Yeah. And it's not the right form. Like, that's my problem. Like, it's it's not the right form for that. That should be in the marketplace and Treasure Hunter either be gone. Right. Or... So you could just buy, say, a 15 pack of lamps in the marketplace for because real money. You have Treasure Hunter as it is, there is an expectation of gambling. There is right. an expectation of getting it big. Um, I don't think it works the same way. I don't think it works as well. You know, you are entirely right on that. The whole model of things like Treasure Hunter are based on that little rush and hoping you get the grand prize. But at the same time, maybe if they can do it without any gambling to it and this proves to be a successful promotion, maybe this is the way to go. And you could bring something like this back, but just rename it to something else instead. Yeah, you could name it um, Tab 1. And marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Are you going to buy anything for this one? Because I know you have jumped in on that before. Um, gosh, you know, probably not. Just and not because I don't like want to support it. Um, I don't because I don't think it's the right way of, of packaging this. But, um, honestly, like. I'm starting to get kind of real goal oriented, um, real material goal oriented in game right. lately. You know, I've made it. I'm I'm trying to like make a spear. I'm going to make a set yeah. of armor that I can yeah. use my guardian's gift on and perk out like myself. Like I don't know. I'm I'm always going to be that XP player, but right now that's not what I'm getting enjoyment from you know so and i'm gonna another and i'm gonna touch the third rail here and i'm gonna ask if there's anybody listening to this either on the first few days of the promo or at any point after if there's anybody listening to this out there and you bought this treasure hunter promotion please do contact me and game Shane one two zero eight eight, or just pop a message in the RSBNB Discord because I'd be interested to to hear from you, uh, hear about your motivations of what made you buy for this one, because I, I think you and I have always said that the one people always are going to buy the most for is the smoldering lamps and the ones where you get to directly choose your prizes. And this is this, this is that, where you get to directly choose your prizes, but it's just medium lamps. So, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's the the limitation. Um, and also, like like I said, I just don't think it's the right format for it. Yeah, I believe in the idea. I do stand by that. But I, it this it's the wrong form. You've spent how many years now since even when Squeal came in? How many years now have people been conditioned? I mean, this to me, this is this is there's no way that it won't fail. Um, uh, it's set up to fail. Yeah, I think anything with the treasure hunter name probably is in that same boat, honestly. Unless you're just, you know, working the same old angle of adding a bit of gambling in there to get higher rewards, which if that's the case, then that's how you sell it. That's going to be how you make your best money with smoldering lamps and the chance of getting something really good from it. I hate to say right. it, but that's the way it is, right? Well, you got to cut in... If you're gonna do it, just cut cut the cord, rip the band-aid off. Like you gotta stop the game. If you're gonna stop the gambling, stop the gambling. You can't have it so that we can get 
yeah. XP. Yes, but that at the is same time, if you do that, at the same time, if you do that, you're going to have people who are going to complain about Jagex selling direct XP because you and I both know that's where we go after this. But after, well, and that may be, I mean, yeah, that's one thing, but let's think about it as not always having, having to be a star. It could be like what I'm talking about earlier, where you're looking at um, a percentage boost for a specific amount of time. Right. Um, that's or, the that or maybe even it. a specific boost, a higher boost for only a specific subset of skills. Say maybe an artisan right. boost or a gatherer's boost. Yeah. I mean, but I, I, I see more of that direction than just a raw XP. Yeah. Yeah. But there's always going to be that XP option because uh, oddments, right? So... Right, and maybe and maybe that's what you do. You have a you know a decreasing scale of here is just pure raw, most expensive is just raw XP, and then a little less expensive is your bonus, and then a little less expensive than that is a smaller bonus, but for a generous period of time. Um, you could scale all of this in the in the same way if you really are serious about removing the gambling aspect of it because right now having both like that means neither one of them can they're both going to fail and you know with that i have the unfortunate feeling that you and i are the only ones who want something like that because I, i honestly don't think this would go over well in the community and that's probably why they haven't done it yet probably but I don't know. I mean, and you can give it, give it time. That'll ease us in, right? And and the the thing I don't get is that the economics of it says that if you want this to be successful, it's got to be XP based. But if it's not a gamble, you got to sell it directly. So the question is, do people want it so that you can sell it directly, like you and I were just talking about, or do you want to go back to Treasure Hunter? I I don't see something in the middle that works economically. And that's the problem with this because players are going to expect something in the middle that isn't treasure hunter but at the same time isn't selling XP. And I think oh. that's the problem. Yeah. Our player base is some of the hardest sticklers when it when it comes. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I mean they really really are. And hey, I mean that's a good thing. It it definitely has probably slowed the pace of monetization of the game. At the same time, um, there has to be a little bit of realism at the end of the day that things will change. Things are changing, and like I said, you gotta also keep everything in perspective that. Yeah, there's more XP in the game, but also the bar has been raised um, quite a bit as well. It's like you were um, talking about with the act track previously. It used to be 13 yeah. mil, now it's 104 or 200. It, it, exactly. So um, there's, you know, there's going to be change, but everything is in, in, uh, you know, perspective. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. All right, man, anything else on that before we move on to the Hearts of Ice? Yeah, just bring on the oddments. I, <laughs> I don't mind the oddments. I like the oddments, and it seems like this next thing you're about to mention yeah. is uh, we're moving towards it. Yeah. Um, let me just ask you, if it meant getting rid of Treasure Hunter and selling XP directly, would you be okay with Jagex selling packages of oddments? Um... I've always, I'm always that basic person. I've, I, I don't mind if they sell the stars, basically. Like if, if at the end of the day they have to, but not lamps. Come on, what's the point? All right, fair enough. You're allowed to have that opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, Hearts of Ice will be discontinued within the next few mo- few months, and of course, as a reminder, these were designed to freeze out prizes that people didn't want, but with changes that have already been made to Treasure Hunter and those outlined above, Hearts of Ice are increasingly redundant and for many a low value currency compared to something like oddments so hearts of ice will be removed 
And instead, Treasure Hunter will be focusing squarely on oddments. And with this, any hearts of ice you currently own will be converted into oddments at a ratio of 5 to 1, meaning 5 hearts of ice for 1 oddment. And there will be no cap to the number that can be converted. So if you'd prefer to use your hearts of ice instead of converting them, please do so over the weeks ahead. We will confirm the date of their removal as soon as we know. And this is, of course, uh, in reaction to the removal of rare item tokens that was kind of just sprung on us. And those were converted to oddments instead. I'm not going to miss Heart's Ice. Yeah, me neither. I never really used them. And you know what I think the problem with them was? It was so confusing. Mm -hmm. And it took longer than, I mean, you're you're wanting to spin, spin, spin. Right. Right. I Instead, you're trying this. to figure out exactly how many hearts of ice and where should I put them best if I want to, if I want to get a specific promo item or if I don't want lamps from a certain skill. Oh, by the way, then you'd now, forget to turn them off. You'd forget <laughs> to turn them off, and oh, by the way, now you're over your max capacity of hearts of ice that you yeah. can use. So, um, I think hearts of ice were always difficult to use. So I'm glad yeah. that they're going away. Five to one, though. It seems like the Reddit... uh, (laughs) Oops, sorry, I mentioned it. (laughs) Isn't happy with that. (laughs) It's a a little steep. I mean, I think think they consulted with Vic on what the uh, (laughs) the ratio should be. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they change that. You're right. Vic (laughs) does feel like a scam artist these days. (laughs) And I've started doing whatever what what you said is that if it's not prismatic, it just gets converted to oddment right away. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to be interested yeah. to to watch this, <laughs> but I I didn't even look at Reddit this week because I imagine there'd be so much in terms of discussion in terms of MTX that I thought it wouldn't even begin uh, be worthwhile for that. So it is what it is. All right, um, let's uh, start wrapping up the show then. Uh, Tannis, I believe you have a pick of the week for us. I have a pick of the week that um, is probably the first time this has ever happened, but I have a game for everybody that I haven't even played yet. I've actually been installing um, while we've been recording here, but um, it is available on Game Pass for PC. Um, I'm not sure if it's available for Game Pass on um regular xbox console it's also on steam oh and, yeah and it is on steam um free on game pass though so um but it's called humankind and the reason it's to pick is i'm just so damn happy another game like this exists um it's been compared to um civilization yep. um it, it is very um heavy when it comes to culture and the mixing of those and what can result um so i'm very excited about it um a game any any game that has a connection to history is um that you know something that i'm i definitely want to check out and um so that's why it's the pick of the week for me um and i can't wait to uh, get some quality time in with it um this weekend i've been on the lookout for a civ like game here um lately and for this to just kind of fall in my lap um yeah have you I tried any paradox games like e4 and the like yeah i played i played okay. um paradox games before yeah, I, I've, I've been. Uh, this one seems to be one of those ones, kind of like Valheim, that started out slow and is just um, ramping up over time. Uh, one of the one of the things I think looks really interesting about this is that when you look at this, it um, it looks like a mobile game on the surface, but as far as I can tell, they don't have a mobile uh, client. And another fun thing about this is that it actually sounds like it has a really neat soundtrack. Um, one of our guys was playing it uh, the other night and was streaming it. And you are right on that Civ. Um, it looks kind of like Civ and would be in that same vein. And it's just going to be a, a question of where it kind of fits into that market. Because, you know, there's Civ is Civ Civilization Series. Sid Meier Civilization Series is, a, I think, a, a good game series. But there's a lot of things that it does that could just be done better. 
and we'll see if humankind mm-hmm. is able to do this. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, let us know when uh, you complete it. And apparently, um, you can take people all the way to the space age with this. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm very curious. It. It, it looks like it's right up my alley. This. I. I. I love this stuff. I mean. Um, ever since I, I think the first Civ game I got into was Civ Four. Okay. Um, right. So th- this this looks it looks good, and I'm and it's on Game Pass. It. I, right. <laughs> That's the thing that blew me away. Um, because I saw it on Steam, and I was like, that looks good. And yeah. Then and I was on Game Pass. I'm like, oh, oh, right. We're taking that right because now. Because it. I don't know, and and I think this is just generally the way it goes. Um, who buys a full price game anymore? Yeah, there's little reason to anymore. You know? Yeah, you can get it on a game streaming service, or just wait till it goes on some form of sale. It very rarely, I think, makes sense to buy a game full priced. So, oh, definitely not, especially over here in New Zealand. Woo. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you're right on that. So, uh, speaking of New Zealand, what do you got for uh, picks of the week? I know you said this yeah. is some stuff you used locally. Yeah, I'm, I I think it works different in different countries, but it's basically just a app called Google Opinion Rewards, and you just install it on your phone, and then every once in a while you'll get a notification and uh, just ask you to do a little survey. Uh, usually it's like, you know, where where have you been? Like, oh, I've been to a supermarket, or sometimes it asks you about YouTube videos, um, what, what sort of <laughs> movies you like, something like that. <laughs> and uh, it just... Gives you maybe twenty cents, sixty cents. I was New Zealand dollars. I think I've even had like a dollar. But I was just thinking, since we have RuneScape Mobile now, you can use it for, you know, buying bonds and stuff. So I actually bought a few bonds using the credit I had because I um. How many surveys did when, you have to do to earn that? Oh, quite a few, but it <laughs> usually gives me a, a few a week. And they and these surveys aren't sort of the horrible long ones you're thinking of. They're like four questions max. Oh, okay. Maybe. Um, so pretty so they, fast. So they don't want to know how many people in your household, what color skin they have, what color hair they no. have, and how much money you make? <laughs> no, no, no. It's basically like, um, did you go to the supermarket? And then it will be like, yes, I went there. Or, and then like, did you use a credit card or did you use money or cash, you know? And then that's basically it. But I, I used to do it with Pokemon Go, get my Pokemon Go coins. But since I don't play that so much anymore... Bonds the bonds all the way. <laughs> Very interesting. It, it surprises me that Google would have something like this. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking. I'm not 100 percent sure. I just looked it up. It might be on the Apple Store as well. It is. I just but, looked that up. Um, yeah. One of the things in the in the reviews here on my Canada Apple Store, um, reviewer says you aren't going to get many offers. Maybe one a week. But twenty five cents yeah, for a week it, for three it really depends. questions isn't that bad. How many offers mm. a week did you get? Uh it's more if I go out. Um, but it's it's probably three or four a week. Probably probably max five, maybe if you're lucky, but All you right. know, if it's something that only takes a few seconds and uh they already they already know all my locations and everything anyway, yeah. so <laughs> Yeah, and, and I'd imagine that this uh probably works with the uh, ads network so yeah interesting interesting all right so there you go <laughs> yeah normally we wouldn't allow something like this on pick of the week but i thought oh it's google it should be fine mm. so <laughs> it's not some dodgy skimmy <laughs> yeah and that's why yeah, i asked it's not if like they... facebook or something i mean <laughs> it's right. not like earn rune coins <laughs> and, and that's why i asked you know they don't ask questions like how many people in your house uh, what color hair do they have and all that other fun stuff no, not not that I've had. As I said, I think you get different surveys in different countries, but mine have always been just yeah, what shops I've been to, and YouTube videos I watch, and you know sometimes what movies do you like? <laughs> oh, that's not too bad then. Hmm. All right, sounds good. Well, with that being said, opinions aside, we're going to move on to our achievements right now. We only have a few of them this week because uh, double XP has come and gone. But starting off, we have Isthmus. Isthmus, I don't know how you say that name. I tried my best. Got 120 Slayer on August 25th. Spy Who Man got 99 Magic on the 25th as well. Moving on to the 23rd, we have Crying Wolf with 99 Woodcutting. Prideus with 99 Prayer. 
Danbridge with 99 smithing on the 22nd, and Lazy Colonel also got 99 fishing on the 22nd. Then moving on, we have Brax Debu with 99 archaeology on the 22nd. We have Spy Who Man with 99 Slayer on the 22nd. We have Delinda EST with 120 archaeology on the 20th. Uh, Prideus with 99 ranged with um, on August 20th. And Spy Who Man with 99 mining on 20th. And okay, lastly on the 20th, we have Terran Alden with 99 prayer. And moving on to the 19th of August, we have Data 479 with 120 invention. And we got Dennis with 120 magic. Duramax, 120 archaeology. And Uber Plastic, 99 prayer. Nicely done. Nicely done all around. And, you know, a bit of a quieter week with uh, Double XP gone, but uh, good achievements nonetheless. Um, But we've been busy in RS. Tanis, you said you've been more goal-focused recently. What particularly are you talking about? Well, um, over over, um, Double XP, I ended up doing some mining um, just because I wanted to... I wanted to do something that was kind of AFK. Um, sure. And and I hadn't worked on that for a while. So um, I was mining, you know, Anamica. And then I thought, well, I have this spear tip that I, that I got in archaeology. Let's go ahead and put all this together. So now I have been um, just working on some smithing, you know, smelting bars and smithing um, to make a... Uh, what is it, the Masterwork Spear of Annihilation? Yep. And then I'm going to make a second set of trimmed Masterwork um, and then use my Guardian's Gift to get that perked out as nice. good as I can. Lord. And um, yeah, so will I ever use it? I, I hope so. <laughs> like, I mean, one of the few bosses I can do is Corp. So, um, you know, might take my new toys down there and try to get a corp bone or something but uh yeah um just just trying something a little bit different than always being always chasing the uh xp rate all right that's fair enough and you know i think that's one of the great things about rs is that the goal can be whatever you want it to be how about you shane um well you know i'm on that same similar vein of course lots of yak tracking which I always mention whenever Yak Track Weeks come out. It's just something I really, really enjoy doing because it guides the gameplay uh, so much. So I've really been enjoying that, even though um, I didn't really feel much of an affinity towards the cosmetics this time around. But aside from uh, Yak Track, I uh, also, and I'm going to floor you with this, (laughs) I've been doing the occasional Reaper task. No, really? Yeah. Reaper, huh? Yeah. I think that means you really hate Slayer. <laughs> this past weekend, I did a Reaper task uh, for Bandos. I did... Cool, a, slow down. <laughs> I did a Reaper task for Hellware. I did a Reaper task for uh, Greg, Grigorovic. And before Ooh. we did the show, I did a Reaper task for Araxor. Nice. Damn. Look at you go, Shane. So, as you said, at this point, you're right, Tannis. At this point, I prefer Reaper Tasks over Slayer. <laughs> well, at least it gets you the XP. I don't know yeah. what that means for for what Slayer is, but that's what I currently prefer. I've been enough, down enough in God Wars 2 that I now have unlocked the Illy uh components so I can look at, look at using my... Uh, wishes to perk out some things with those uh, very high-end perks on that, but um, I'll probably also, by the time the weekend's up, go back to Carapac as well for um, one of the Marks of War uh, Yak Tracks. And I imagine myself be spending a good amount of time next week at, at the Glacier itself. So I never thought I'd say this, but I've been doing PVM in, in addition to Yak Track this week. Oh, wow. Good Shango. It must be 
must be something in the water because <laughs> actually I've been doing the same thing. You oh, sort of God. cut me off there. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, my, when uh, Sorensen came back, I we decided, oh, let's go do some bandos uh, like we used to do. What's that, like 10 years ago now, something more than that? And, um, yeah, we found it super easy and we were like, oh, let's go try one of these God Wars 2 dungeons. And we were doing Vindicta. I didn't realize that Vindicta is actually quite straightforward. Yeah. It's it's yeah. almost just like a slightly harder – uh, God Wars 1 boss, so we just smashed that a few times, and um, as you said, been getting Reaper tasks, trying uh, Bandos, Araxor. Did you do all your Araxors in a row, Shane? Or? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I don't know if I'm up for that, with that, that um, what is it, aggression or whatever he builds uh, The up. Enraged, yeah, the Enraged isn't that bad. Uh, the Araxor yeah? task is only like three or four, so it's not too bad. Oh, okay, because I got eight, so... I was- <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I was, yeah. okay, so I got it's mine like- at the low end then. Yeah, so I did three of them, and I was like, I'll come back, I'll probably do it after the show. <laughs> Don't want to get too cocky, but um, yeah, no, it's a, I lo- that's a great boss. I did it years ago. Um, once, once you get a hang of it, I sort of jumped back on. First time I used up all my food, took a yak. Yeah. And then after the third kill, I finally got down to how it used to be, where, you know, only, only really use a few food if you're lucky. Yeah, and you know, I'm I'm gonna just agree with Tannis on this one that if you're if you have the darkness mechanic and you're not entirely oh, sure where yeah, all the spiders yeah. are, that can get kind of difficult. So I I can that, see why you have ir- difficulties with that, that Tannis. That is irritating. And then doing the jump on the wall, I always mess it up no matter what. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and that's a timing attack too. And once yeah. again, tick rate and all that other, all that other fun stuff. Fun stuff. So, yeah. Um, boy, you're right. Something is in the water this week here at RSBNB Update. Yeah. I oh, also went to Elite Dungeon Free. Um, oh, oh yeah. yeah. We that's, went for that's a, a we, good idea. We, <laughs> did the first boss, did the second boss. They're not too bad. Um, yeah, probably never be able to do the ambassador without someone <laughs> helping us. So we just chucked our uh, death touch darts at it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's why you wanted those then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Nice. I'm not sure what just happened here. No, it, it's very odd. <laughs> yeah. Tannis, you're about the only one this week who has been normal in this regard. You know, uh, and to be fair, it sounds like he's building up for it. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. Um, we're going back to where we belong. No more trips to Carapac for me. Aw, too bad. <laughs> I really enjoy the Carapac fight. You're right, something's in the water here, and I think at that point it's time to shut this episode of RSBNB Update down. So uh, thank you, RR Man, for being here. Uh, if you guys wanted full show notes, you can find those at update.rsbnb.com. You can also subscribe to us on any podcast listener. We're on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google, Pocket Cast, Stitcher, and, of course, YouTube. Check us out at youtube.com slash rsbnb. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe there as it helps the channel out. And with that being said, we'll be back next week to cover the Glacier Front. See you then, everyone. Take care. See ya. Peace out.